Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at an introduction to consolidation slash combination. This topic is covered in advanced accounting courses as well as the CPA exam. So it's very important that you understand the idea of consolidation and combination before you start to do journal entries or preparing worksheet between the consolidation of two companies. Now, whether you're an accounting student or a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you take a look at my website farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. If you are studying using one of those national review courses, keep them. I am a useful addition. I can explain the material differently, give you alternative explanation, which in turn will help you pass the... Uh, actually, first it will help you understand your CPA review better, in turn help you pass the CPA exam. Your risk with me is a one month of subscription. That's your risk. Your potential gain is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other courses as well. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so and take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So the first thing is, why companies purchase or combine with another company? What's the idea behind it? Well, you're going to see there are many reasons, but it's good to kind of get an idea about some of the major reasons why companies buy another company. One is cost savings. Well, what does that mean? It means when we combine both companies, we could eliminate some duplicate position. This is an example of it. Save some cost. For example, a good, a good example would be Tesla and Grumman automation where Tesla basically stated that if we go through this we basically not if we go through this this combination what will do it would reduce capital expenditure required per vehicle this way it will save them money so the one reason is cost saving and that should, hopefully this makes sense two quick entry to a new market or an existing product or a foreign market a classic example will be Microsoft buying LinkedIn. Microsoft wanted to start a social media. So rather than st starting a social media, a quick entry is to buy an existing one. Or Amazon buying Whole Foods. Amazon is online selling. Whole Foods has physical places. So rather than start, you could just buy something that already exists. Another reason why companies buy other companies is the economies of scales allowing greater efficient efficiency, well, basically cost savings in a sense, and negotiating powers in terms of financing and purchasing ability. So if you go to the bank and you're larger, you might be able to negotiate a lower rate. Or if you are negotiating with a supplier, you might be able to negotiate a better term. So bigger is usually stronger. Okay. Also, it could be a vertical integration, basically helping you in your distribution or further processing of your product. A good example will be Salesforce.com and MuleSoft. Salesforce accepts, expects substantial synergies with MuleSoft application programming interface enabling client to connect across various data sources. So by, by buying MuleSoft, you would allow your clients to connect to other data sources. And one of the reasons you buy other companies is diversification of business risk. You want to diversify just, you know, you want to be in other businesses just for the for the sake of risk. And you can have unlimited reasons of why one company buys another company. One of them could be just ego, ego of the board of directors or the CEO of one company that want to expand and buy and be the largest. So there are this is a list of some sample some sample reasons. Now, why consolidation? So why, when we buy other companies, we consolidate the financial statements? That we need to know why, because we're gonna be preparing consolidated financial statements. One, it's more meaningful to outside parties than showing each separate financial statement separately. Because it's necessary, because you're not dealing with one company, you are dealing with many companies that are under the same umbrella. So when you invest, you're not investing in one particular company, you want to take a look at the whole picture. Now you can break it down, but you also want to see the big picture, which is it's necessary for the fair presentation when one of the entities in the consolidated group is included because we could have direct, indirect interest, related party transaction. We want to see the whole thing. So consolidation trends, transcend, transcend the boundaries of incorporation to encompass all the corporation under control. So we're looking at everything at the whole pictures. Okay. And bear in mind that various companies may retain their legal identities as separate corporation, which we'll see because we have many different types of business combination. Nevertheless, having them all under the same umbrella, it gives more meaningful 
information to outside parties. Now we have five types of business combination. And basically, what's a business combination? It's a transaction where one company, the acquirer, gets control of another company. This is what a com uh, business combination is. So this could happen in many different ways, in many different format. We're going to have five types of business combinations that you need to be familiar with. The first one is statuary merger via asset acquisition or statuary merger via stock acquisition statuary consolidation via capital asset or asset acquisition acquisition of more than 50 percent of the common stock and variable interest and obviously once you have a list if you follow my lectures i will go through each one of those and a little bit more in details starting with merger via asset acquisition what does that mean just look at the wording asset acquisition so what are you doing you are buying actually not only the assets you are basically purchasing their assets and liabilities think of buying their inventory think of buying their buildings think of buying their furniture you're buying the company's asset itself in exchange of cash other assets debt, stocks or a combination of these so basically you might be showing that to buy them you might be giving them stocks but buying everything all the assets and liabilities so the acquired company ceased to exist so if you buy this company basically you bought everything the company is basically empty so basically we're looking at company a plus company b let's assume company a buys company b what survives is company a so all assets are liabilities are absorbed by the purchasing company this the acquiry company is basically gone so at the combination date all the assets and liabilities are transferred so one company exists survive and the other one dissolved and this is basically a single event a single event we'll do it once and we'll get done with it and we'll work an example going over this not in the session and they in future session and basically company b will have zero balances and they will close out basically company b is gone it was older assets and liabilities are absorbed by company a now this is statuary merger via stock acquisition so what are we doing here we are buying purchasing 100 percent of the stock not 99 not 98 100 percent of the stock we transfer their assets and liabilities to our company so rather than buying the asset and the liabilities we buy them through this by buying the stocks and we legally dissolve the other company simply put a plus b if b is is if a is buying b b is gone and what survive is a so all our assets and liabilities are also absorbed by the purchasing company at the combination date one company is dissolved one company survive the survive is company a and it's a single event and you're going to see why I keep repeating it's a single event, because we're going to see later that when you have another type of buying, when you buy less than 100%, you're going to have work, work papers and entries every year to consolidate both. Now, company BB will have a zero balance and their, their account will be closed out at the end of the year. Another type of consolidation is statuary consolidation via capital or asset acquisition. How does this work? Here you have two or more companies that transfer their, either their assets or their stocks into a third company. Simply put, company A plus company B, they combine and they form company C. Now this is called statuary consolidation. That has nothing to do with the accounting consolidation, which we'll talk about soon little bit about soon and more about later so just basically the name is statuary consolidation it doesn't mean you do consolidation in this type of transaction an example will be Daimler and Chrysler they combine into Daimler and Chrysler company as a new company it's again it's a single event both companies will have zero balances closed out and the new company will start now we also have acquisition of more than 50 percent of the voting stock of the other company here you purchase more than 50 percent could be 51 could be 99 and what happened here once you more go more than 50 percent you achieved control there is no dissolution you did not dissolute the other company the company remained in existence and a prime example there are many examples amazon and whole foods but what's the logic so why don't you kind of whole food absorbs amazon well there are some business reasons why behind it um, if you keep the company exist on its own, they better utilize their trade names. They they work over this over the years, their licenses, any experience that they have, employee employee loyalty, because they're still working for the same company, customer loyalty, customer are familiar with Whole Foods brand, and other company reputations that can be possible when you keep the company as a separate legal entity. So here the subsidiary. Whole Foods will keep its sole value, keep its own value, and this is good when, if we want to sell it or spin it off later down the road. Makes sense. And 
parent company establish an investment account. So basically, how do we account for it? We account for it through an investment account. But here's the thing. We have to prepare consolidation at the end of every year, at the end of every year using work papers. And this is basically, again, now we're starting to head toward the major course. This is what we're going to be doing down the road, looking at these consolidation work papers. The fifth method to acquire a company or do a combination is controlled via contractual agreement. This is called a variable interest entity. We'll be discussing this concept later on in future chapters. If you're interested and want to learn about it now, I'm going to post a link for you in the description. I do have a lecture about variable interest entity. I will cover it again in this course. At the end of this recording, I would like to remind you that if you're studying for the CPA exam, take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I am a useful addition to that course, so I can help you understand the material better. I can provide you alternative explanation, alternative resources, which in turn will help you do better on the CPA exam. At the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you that this you, you pass your CPA once in your lifetime. Study hard. Good luck. Don't, cheat, don't shortchange yourself and stay safe.